As I mentioned, this is an EPA uh, Green Enterprise Innovation Demonstration Project. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I wanted to acknowledge all of the tremendous stakeholders that were involved in this project, and many are on the on the um, call now. So um, the we had a fantastic steering committee, the Southern Waste Region. Um, reuse and the Department of Environment, Climate and Communications, uh, also the EPA and uh, CRNI were on our um, steering group. The technical partner uh, for the project was Clean Technology Center, and they should be uh, joining as well today. Um, and then uh, the Rediscovery Center helped with closing the loop and um, reporting analysis and our, our innovation showcase partner. Charity Retail Ireland provided great insights for us. And um, Vincent's was our charity retail partner, Ballyhor Development Company. They helped us with transportation and um, local knowledge. And then um, Wicklow, we did, I'll get into kind of the details, but we'll be, uh, we did uh, three pilot projects. So, and they were in, in uh, Wicklow County and County Donegal and Cork. So we're really grateful for the teams there that helped us with this. So in terms of the context for the research project and, and why we did this, um, there is a policy that will be coming into place, uh, Article 11.1 .1 of the EU Waste Framework Directive, and it obliges member states to set up uh, separate collection for textiles starting January 1st, 2025. So that is key. And so we wanted to see what do we need to do to do this? What are the challenges? What kind of funding needs to take place? Um, what's possible? So also there was an environmental context for it. So right now there's 110,000 tons of post-consumer textiles are collected as waste in Ireland annually. And so what we really wanna do is try to keep collected textiles within Ireland so the value is maximized and business and employment opportunities are created. So that's the social, economic and social reason for doing the project. In terms of, just to give you an idea of the flows of post-consumer textiles in Ireland now, as I mentioned, there's 110,000 tons of collected across all sectors. Um, annually, and then within that, 64,000 tons are collected um, from households. Um, and then there's an additional 60,000 tons resold, reused, or recycled, which is wonderful um, as a circular economy organization uh, through a variety of entities. So that's good. And then within that, um, we were able to quantify or we found through previous research and also our research that um, 17,500 tons are handled by charities. So they're mostly handled through in-store donations and textile banks. And then approximately um, or estimated 40,000 tons are collected by commercial textile recyclers and um, take retailer take back schemes. Now, um, uh, this the source of this data was a wonderful project um, that actually Claire from the Rediscovery Center was involved in. Um, actually, when I think when you started it, when you were at CRNI, but uh, the nature and extent of post-consumer textiles in Ireland. So I highly and CTC was involved in that as well. Highly recommend people who are interested in this area to take a look at it. Um, for sure, it gives a lot of good information. And we built the, the project on this. So um, let's see. So our project aims, we ran a pilot to compare three different textile collection systems and communications to support. As I mentioned, the counties, so the towns that we focused on were Arklo, Boncrana, and Charleville. And we wanted to model textile quality, quantity, and the impact of each uh, textile collection method, and we want to determine how to maximize value of post-consumer textiles in Ireland. So what we did is we involved stakeholders um, and engaged with them throughout the process. Um, we reviewed post-consumer textile initiatives 
and did an initial project design. We um, did the design and then redesigned, and I'll get into a little bit of that. Um, and then, uh, and then we implemented the pilot and did data collection. We conducted a behavior and attitude surveys in the three towns, and then um, did data modeling as well. Um, and then, sorry, I can't see the last my slide here, but we reported on it. And sorry, hang on one sec. We reported on it, and. Um, Sorry, and came up with solutions for uh, post-consumer textiles. So that is what we did. And then in terms of the actual pilot, uh, separate collection pilot method. So what we did is we identified 32 potential um, collection systems and we ranked them with stakeholders. Um, then we, um, sorry, looked at the preferred um, methods of textile collection methods. So those were fixed private public collection, curbside, um, and then we had to redesign it uh, due to a number of factors that we can get into in Q&A, but um, it was definitely a complex project and a complex time, so we can get into all of that if you'd like to hear more about that, but I want to make sure we get through the presentation. Um, so we ended up with event-based private and public collections, curbside collections, and communication over a four-month period. These were the challenges briefly, just human resources, logistics, health and safety, the impact of COVID-19, and then the project budget constraints. And we re because of the redesign, there was a little bit of a delay. So what we did is we found that the fixed collection points are pro prohibitively cost and resource intensive. And this was kind of essentially asking businesses or community centers to host a box where people could bring in um, textiles. And again, this was during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but so what we need to do is if we really want to prioritize local reuse, uh, there needs to be coordinated infrastructure. You're muted, Christine. Sorry about that. So there you go. And um, we'll get more into the findings later. So in terms of the design, we want to, our whole aim was to make donations easier. We wanted the local communications to really reflect where and what to donate very clearly. And then in terms of that, we wanted to maximize convenience for people. And that was what was determined through extensive stakeholder analysis and engagement. And then we wanted to understand the attitudes and behaviors around unwanted clothing and home textiles. And then in terms of the collections in Charleville, this shows you what we were able to um, collect through the different collections in Charleville. Just to give you an idea of the way we did it, we did curbside collections, so door-to-door -door collections in different um, localities across Charleville. And we, um, we were able to reach 900 houses. And um, you can see how much we, um, how many, so 70 bags total is what was collected. And then with ARCLO, we did limited time drop-off events. So again, this was in consultation with stakeholders in, op, in ARCLO, and this made the most sense. So we actually worked with a local secondary school and ARCLO Recycling Center, and then people could drop them off, so it's event-based. And then in Bunkrana, we um, did a communications um, around uh, the project. And again, it was, it was called Donate, Don't Waste. And we added a textile bank as well. And then Jack is going to take on these slides. Thanks, Christine. And so I'll just, uh, I see there's animations on the slides. So maybe if, if you bring up all the points at once, it'll sure. be, yeah. I can get through it easier. 
Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to talk through a bit of the, the piece of the work that the Rediscovery Center um, took up as part of this project. So once the, the pilots had been run and data had been gathered, um, we came in and basically sought to do a, um, a modeling exercise to scale up the data to a national level, and then um, a, a sort of scoping project to um, make a comprehensive list of potential solutions for closing the loop, meaning, you know, increase the use of post-consumer textiles, and then to analyze some of the, you know, some of the potential um, top solutions that, that we could start to explore nationally. So the points in this slide, we'll see, <clears throat> due to some of the reasons that Christina went earlier um, around, you know, capacity of the project and so on, and I suppose unexpected challenges that arose during the implementation phase, the data generated through the pilots were not sufficient for carrying out the national scaling of the exercise. Um, so financial human resource constraints, the project timeframe, the number of samples that we were able to get um, and completing the work within the allocated time of the project. Because of that, um, we undertook a few additional tasks to gather data. So we examined existing research, including the NATEX report, but also some of our collaborators, including Charity Retail Ireland, St. Vincent de Paul, um, and a commercial textile recycler, did sort of limited um, data gathering exercises for us at sorting centers and provided us with a bit of that, so, some data um, through those methods. These, these additional data sets indicated that, you know, these two points, the vast majority of post-consumer textiles have value either through local resale or export. That means they, you know, a lot of them can be, I think over 50% from the charity retail um, data was able, was, was suitable for immediate resale. So there's a high portion there that can be reworn or reworn with, you know, fairly minor uh, repair. Another large portion is suitable for industrial uses such as um, padding. And only a very small portion from all these data sets was only suitable for, for example, energy recovery through incineration, somewhere in the region of one to 3%. So that was one of the key points that there is value um, in, in this data, in these, these textiles. Um, also the second point, there's significant variation in the results from each data set, largely due to the point in the material flow. For example, the commercial textile recycler is getting textiles after it's already been through um, the, charity, the, the charity shop sorting process, for example. So there was, there was variation and that feeds into one of the recommendations of the project around creating a national database. So um, we can go to the next slide, please, Christine. Um, in addition, uh, we did gather some um, very useful data through the attitudinal surveys. So you'll see here that uh, 438 survey responses were submitted. 216 of those were validated based on the um, geolocation of the IP address through which they were carried out. One of the key points here um, is shown in this, this, um, this bar chart is that the majority, over 50% of respondents indicated that they would have you know, items for um, ready for donation every four to six months. So in terms of timing, a national um, collection um, program, whether it be curbside or through time limited drop-offs or through another method, the kind of the six month interval seemed to be, you know, the point at which most households would have items. So anything more frequent might not be cost effective, while anything less frequent might, um, you know, lead to, you know, just disposal through general waste. But again, this is just one survey, so it's a good indication, but there would be more details or more analysis needed and more data needed. Um, and then this other piece here is that motivators for donating so a lot of the survey respondents indicated that increased knowledge of what happens to the textiles once they are donated, um, what kinds of processing takes place, who will benefit, and what environmental benefits there are. So kind of unpacking some of the opaqueness, I think, in the textile processing world um, was indicated as, as something that would help to motivate increased donations. Okay, next slide, Christine, please. Um, so building on these data, um, you know, with the noted caveats, we undertook a scoping exercise, both 
based on projects located in Ireland and elsewhere. And we compiled a database of 74 options under different kinds of handling and processing activities um, relating to post-consumer textiles. We you know, developed a number of criteria to select two solutions that should be explored further. This included assessing the scalability, the end markets, quality, potential contamination, regulatory barriers, carbon footprint, and um, reuse hierarchy. And based on this, we identified two main categories uh, for focus in this project. That was those textiles with medium value for export, and that you know could be reworn with minimal repair interventions, and then low value um, textiles that were more suitable for shredding and recycling. So we, I mean, we're not, I suppose, we want to be careful with our language here in that we've we've conducted an eco-business model canvas for two solutions that and deemed them worthy of further exploration. So one example is the Arnett circular fix model, which is is currently in implementation. And it's an example of a, a repair activity taking place in a mainstream retailer. And the, the primary rationale here is that it's something that could help to mainstream the idea of repair to you know consumers who may not have that in their mindset already. The second is Usefully, which is a New Zealand-based project that is looking to expand um, its technologies elsewhere, including in Ireland. And basically they take large quantities of high cellulose um, fabrics and use them as road base. They work a lot with um, civil service uh, organizations where there, there might be large quantities, for example, of um, old police uniforms where you know the composition of the fabric and can use it for a single large scale purpose. So that's just displacing some carbon intensive materials um, already and you know looks like a promising um, option. The next piece was that we ran a showcase of innovation solutions for post-consumer clothing and home textiles in the Rediscovery Center. At this, we presented some of the results. Um, the focus of this exhibition was on highlighting how we might move textiles upwards from lower to higher value applications, including through those two solutions I just discussed. We also held a stakeholder uh, workshop at, at this point. We kind of presented some of our results and gathered some, I think, really important feedback at that point in time. And some of the, I think, the, the qualitative findings of the research were solidified there in terms of the sector, which we'll go on to now. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Thanks, Christine. So, um, yeah, you can bring up all the, all the points and I'll just talk through them. So the project found, um, you know, for the reasons that, the reasons it was difficult to implement the project was, was important in terms of understanding, um, I suppose, the capacity limitations in, in the, the sector as a whole. Um, due to lack of, you know, financing and other aspects, but we found that Ireland is quite unprepared to meet the requirements of the Waste Framework Directive in terms of separate collect textile collections. Um, we found that separate, separate collection of textiles is very resource intensive in terms of uh, time and um, the physical resources such as vehicles and sorting facilities. The sector does not currently have that infrastructure and um, to expand its role. Um, yeah, we can talk about these in more detail in the questions, but I'll, I'll just try to move on. So we have time. Um, existing public data is limited. So we're recommending the uh, improvement of the knowledge base there. And um, the post-consumer textile sector is also underdeveloped as a holistic sort of sector that collaborates on these aspects. We found through our stakeholder workshops in particular that there is some fragmentation and siloing of different organizations and operations. Um, and then finally, the stakeholder engagement as a whole reveals strong support for public communications that emphasize simplicity and post-collection sorting of textiles. And what this means is basically at the point of collection where the public will donate clothing, it needs to be as simple as possible as the feedback we got. The sorting should take place afterwards so that you encourage the maximum kind of collecting of textiles. Um, and next slide, Christine, thanks. So based on those findings, the recommended actions for policymakers in the report are the following. So to scope, develop and support infrastructure, human capacity and collaboration between current and future stakeholders in the post-consumer textile select um, sector. And that will support a national separate textile collection system down the road. 
to establish a national standardized database of quantities and categories of textiles currently gathered through different collection methods. So that's that knowledge base I was talking about. Third, um, a national separate collection system for textiles should be as simple as possible, as I mentioned. Fourth, um, linking back to those two solutions, there needs to be further exploration for avenues to mainstream reuse and repair, and secondly, to implement large scale remanufacturing of low quality textiles. And fifth, adequate funding must be quantified and targeted to support all of these recommendations. Um, and I think that's it, Christine, is it? Uh, so the next slide is? Yep, Q&A, yep, Q&A, would be great. So I think I can monitor the, the chat, Christine, if you want. Yeah, um, so I'll just any... stop sharing my screen. Well, first of all, thank you so much, everyone, for, like, I know it was a, Fair, it was a really complex <laughs> project, so we tried to synthesize it as easily as we could.